Hi, I'm so glad you're here for this online dating masterclass to support you in having a system for online dating so that you can create and attract the right person for you. And in all of the modern dating world, I know it can be really overwhelming and frustrating and confusing. So I boiled down these five key strategies and tips to support you in creating an experience that actually works and that is fun for you. So I'm so glad you're here. I invite you to just remove any distractions for the next several minutes and get your journal, get ready to take some notes and be here in a way that it's like you're actually on a date. So are you willing to give yourself this time and give this class the presence you would as if you were on a date? This is actually one of the tools that will support you is how you bring your energy to something is actually going to give you that outcome, the outcome of receiving that kind of presence in a relationship. And since this is all about relationship, I encourage you to use that tool right here and now. So if we haven't met, my name is Macy Matarazzo. I'm the founder of Big Happy Love Coaching, and I work with smart single women who want to create or get a system to create that kind of phenomenal love relationship that lasts. And this isn't just getting a date or getting some guy to like you. This is about real, true companionship, the kind of soulful, connected love relationship where you can laugh, create, and grow together. And I know that if you're here, that you obviously care about your own personal development to receive some teachings and tools support to support you in this. And I want to celebrate you for that because I'll tell you, the biggest roadblock for most relationships is people have this idea that they should just know how to do it, that it should just happen. and. I know for me, I had this feeling like, well, it's happening for everyone else so easily. Why isn't it happening for me? What's wrong with me? And then I had a lot of shame around that. But I want to let you know that any relationships that you're out there seeing that you think, oh, everything's so easy for everyone else. Well, it's not true. It really isn't. 39% of all marriages end in divorce. That is a lot. So the fact that you're willing to learn about consciously creating a relationship is a huge step. And I'm so grateful for you because I feel like we really do need the skills to consciously connect on the planet right now. And I will say that in all of the things that are happening on the planet that even with a pandemic, even with, you know, all this time in lockdown and with people now sort of venturing out, that one of the things that I've seen in the dating space, in the relationship space, is a lot of people waking up to recognizing that they truly want that love and connection. And in the past, maybe... There's been a lot of distractions and busyness with work and, and wanting to be successful. But the truth is that a core need as a human being is to be loved and to have connection. That is non-negotiable. Like in order to thrive on this planet, we need to know how to do that and how to receive that and how to allow that in our life. And so many of us grew up in, in families where no one knew how to do that. So then we have 
beliefs and ideas that are in the subconscious that have directed our relationship space in unhealthy ways, in ways that have continued to keep us accepting less than or not really receiving fully what nourishes us. And that's not your fault. That's just kind of a societal flaw that we don't learn about relationships and we don't have that as part of our upbringing. It's all just by default. Oh, I watch this show. I read this magazine. I watch my parents fight. I see the this or that that is unhealthy. And then I have this idea about relationship that is so not actually what truly is possible. That extraordinary love is really available for every one of us, no exceptions. And that's my mission, is to support women like you in having that kind of extraordinary, phenomenal, soulful, connected love. So I'm glad you're here so I can share with you these tips. And I invite you right now to recognize if there's any part of you that feels shame about, oh, well, I can't believe I have to have a class on this, or, oh, I should be able to just, just figure it out. Well, if it's meant to be, it will just happen, right? Well, letting go of all of that, because if you want extraordinary love, it does take a consciousness. It does take doing something different. And that's what I've learned. And that's what I see my clients over and over again, have this awakening around what it takes to create healthy, happy, lasting love. And you deserve that. So do not let any of the inner critics get in the way of you receiving this right now. And it doesn't matter what you think has been easy for other people that you're here for something greater. And I can tell you from personal experience, when you have that person by your side that says, we got this, you know, we can get through anything no matter what the universe throws our way, that I know I have that kind, loving support. And I truly feel adored and I adore my person. And there's nothing greater than that. It's amazing. So these skills that I'm going to teach you today are really going to help you have a different way of being with online dating. And I will say that online dating is a great tool. It's not the only tool, but I do find it to be, you know, in the numbers of the women that I've supported, a huge percentage, 75, 80% of the women that have created their love relationships with me have met their person online. The other part are just in the space of meeting people in the world, but let's just be honest, right now there's less of that and more online. Everyone's online and there's more people than ever that are online, so I really want you to have these strategies to support you. So get out your journal, get a pen, you know, get rid of the distractions so that you can receive these. And at the end of this call, I am going to give you more ways to nurture this, support this. I do do this for a living. And for those of you who like hand holding or want that personalized, prescriptive kind of coaching and teaching, then I can give you that too. So stick around if you want to know more about that, but stick around and make sure you're watching this whole training because each one of these is so important. And the fifth one, so I'm going to go through five, the fifth one I will say is the most important because it's really about what it takes to connect in and attract and magnetize your person and to create that invitation that attracts your person so that your person is like, yes, this is the person I've been looking for. 
And how amazing is that? So the fifth one is really focused on that. So thank you for being here. I did meet my beloved online, by the way. And these things that I'm about to share with you are the tools that I use. And I know that it created something amazing. And it in before using these strategies, I found that I kept meeting people who kind of confused me. It was like, did they read my profile? Why is this happening? And I felt misunderstood. I felt like I was attracting the wrong ones. I mean, oftentimes I felt like they were kind of losers, you know, and I don't mean to sound judgmental, but I know that I had so much to give and yet these people weren't really putting as much effort in as I was and really wanted someone who wanted to like create an amazing life with me. So I know that these things really work. So are you ready to hear them? So mark in your journal, number one, number one is really deciding that you are going to have this. You thinking, oh my gosh, that seems so simple. What are you crazy? <laughs> well, this is about being able to receive a relationship. This is about declaring to yourself that you are having this desire, this love story that's in your heart. Here's the thing, that desire that's in your heart is not something you made up. This is not some like, oh, frivolous thing. Oh, you probably should focus on other things. This is just kind of a fantasy or whatever. When you have that deeper desire that is coming through you, then that is a divine message. And with that desire is everything you need to have it but you have to agree with it. You have to be able to say, yes, soul, yes, heart. I hear you, I will have this, yes. And you have to say yes to it because that's a relationship between you as the conscious being and that deeper soul desire. And notice there are two things there. There's the you as this conscious being and your soul desire that is actually the beloved relationship right there. And when you are willing to honor and listen and say, oh yes, I hear you heart, and say, yes, we will have this, then that is a union. That is the beginning of a love relationship and holds the energy of the kind of relationship that you can have if you say yes to it. But if you're in the place where you're like, oh, well, it better, it'll just happen. And your heart is like, please just say yes to this. And yet your, your actions aren't like in service of that heart vision, that love story within. I, here's one example where maybe you just say, oh, okay, that would be fun, but I'm going to just, you know, throw up a picture and a couple sentences on a online dating site and hope something happens and just kind of back burner it. I think of it as like, oh, the back burner rather than having it in front of you within your declaration of what it is that you're creating, there is different energy. So if you notice it's kind of in the peripheral, on the back burner, what will it take for you to bring it into that front and say yes to it and decide I'm having this? That's number one. It's a huge shift. And I remember when I did this and I remember really recognizing the biggest, the change that I created in my universe just by doing that. So that's number one, decide you will have it. Bring it off the back burner, bring it to the front. Number two is about the energy. So even, 
you know, being here right now, the energy of being conscious with the whole process, are you willing to bring that giddiness, that love, that presence to the whole process, whether it's writing your profile or logging on to get messages from the dating site or even picking a dating site, the whole process, you want to bring to it that loving consciousness, that energy that you perceive that you will receive when you're with the person that adores you. That part needs to start now because you can't have a happy, loving love story if the whole journey is kind of grumpy or <laughs> frustrated or it's not going to happen or like your mindset around it is really negative and heavy the whole journey the energy you bring to it is what you are creating so if you're noticing that you struggle with that, like that you struggle with believing, you struggle with worthiness, or you struggle feeling like you're good enough to have something amazing, then that's the kind of inner work that you want to give attention to. And we'll talk about this at the end, because when you put yourself online, the insecurities and the fears are the things that are going to be magnified. So you want to be able to be in a place where you can really, what I like to say, play into love. And that's not easy if you feel that the wounds and the pain and the fear are distracting you. So I know that for me, I did take time to do that inner work so that I could show up in the online world in a different way. So once I did, I was able to really easily create a different energy around how I showed up. I notice some people will say, oh, online dating. Oh, this is the way it always is. Oh, people never want to get on the phone or men are always this, or there's a lot of generalizations that come out and judgments around what it means to do online dating. And that only comes from when there's some inner healing work that needs to be done. So just notice that, and that may be something we want to talk about. You can reach out to me, set up a time to talk about what it takes to actually change that for you. I do sessions called happy and love sessions, and we can talk about what that will give you, but that is, you know, something you really want to be aware of. The third thing is that you really want to know your values and be living them. So what is it that you value in life? Is it that you value humor and that's important to you, that you would meet someone who has a really fun sense of humor and that you can kid around and laugh? Is one of your values that you love adventure and travel and learning about new cultures? Is one of your values health and activity, like being fit and, you know, having kind of an active lifestyle? So really being aware of what your values are. A really fun, simple way to figure this out is to ask yourself two questions. The first one is, ask yourself, when in my life did I have the most fulfilling experiences? I was the most happy, time went by really fast, and life was great. Like, what was happening in your life? Where were you? What was happening? And then look at that experience and notice what the values are that are there. Is it travel? Is it service? Is it learning new things? Is it a spiritual journey? Is it something else? Like, is it with your family or, or, you know, doing a marathon? <laughs> Whatever the thing is, just noticing the values that are in that. The second question would be, 
the opposite, which is when in your life were you the most miserable and what was missing? And look at the values that were missing for you. Like what was not there? Were, are you a super creative person and you were working in an accounting office and it's just like felt stifling and torturous for you? Then you know that you value creativity, you value flexibility, maybe you value spontaneity, whatever those things are. So begin to start weeding out those values and noticing too, if that's something you are living right now. Oftentimes people will say, oh, I really value sense of humor, mm, but then they're all grumpy. Like, okay, well, what are those amusing things that you're not actually choosing for you right now, that if you were to choose that, you probably would have a more attractive energy because you're living those things that really light you up. This is a huge thing. If you're not doing the inner work to address any wounds or pains from the past, if you're not living your values in the present moment and doing those things that light you up, then there are gonna be a lot of things that keep you from receiving the love you deserve. So each one of these steps will reveal, you know, something that you can choose, but also where you may need to bring more consciousness, bring more kindness, bring more self-healing to or get support so that you can expedite this whole process. The so, okay, so the fourth one is kind of like I just kind of led into, which is really being able to choose love over fear. What are those things that you are doing in your life that aren't actually working for you? Is it your work? Is it your environment? It, um, are you not connected to people who support you? Are you not feeling good in your body? Are you believing the inner critics and the thoughts that are keeping you feeling down and like you can't have what you want? This is, if you're, this is about noticing your life, noticing if things are feeling painful or if you look around at your life and you're not liking what you see, something needs to change. So that's gonna be the inner space of being able to know what lights you up, to be able to give yourself the acknowledgement that you are the creator of your life, taking personal responsibility to make the choices that actually support you in creating greater. So if you don't like what you're seeing, what else can you choose? That's basically what's gonna be really important here because if you're feeling like the universe and life is jerking you around and that you are the victim of what's happening around you, then you've released all your power and you can't actually have an, an elevated relationship because you've, you're not aligned with your truth, the genius and the power that is you and consciously creating your life. For the kind of love relationship we're talking about here, this is something extraordinary. And everyone deserves that. Everyone deserves to be seen, heard, and adored. So I'm showing you the way right now. So this fourth one is, you don't like what you're seeing, you gotta choose something else. Choose those thoughts, those feelings, those people, those activities that are fun for you, that really serve you. So the fifth one, and this is the one that I really, this takes a little more, um, maybe time and energy, but it's not impossible. This is about actually when you put yourself out there 
how are you presenting yourself? What is the presence that you be in your online profile? In creating an online profile, there's a lot to it, but I just want to give you some core elements to this that you need to know in order for you to actually call in that beloved. Remember I said there's like a magnetism to this aspect of it. So your online profile is you. So how do you put you in it? Most people don't. I will say that 99% of the profiles that I read are not serving people. They're basically keeping them invisible, keeping them from being seen by the person that is an amazing match. So instead, they get a lot of static, a lot of people who are just also in this kind of soup of um, mush. It's so let's talk about this. So I, I just showed you four things that are contributing to this step. You know, being able to choose that you're going to have it, being aware of the energy, space, and consciousness that you bring when you are online dating, the energy of the process, the playing into love, the, you know, really knowing that the energy of the journey is what you will receive ultimately and getting clear on your values this is going to be really important in the profile writing and being able to choose the things that light you up so one of the first things you want to know about building your profile is to bring your values into it so in order to do that you want to paint those pictures how do you live those values how is it that you, as someone who really values learning about different cultures and traveling, what would that look like for you? Is it traveling to the next town over and checking out the cafe that's there? Or is it exploring Thailand for six weeks? There are a lot of differences. So when we're writing, when we're creating our online profile, we want to paint the pictures that really show who you be. And that takes getting to your value and start sharing the experiences that show how you do that. So for example, you can start exploring some different questions. Oh, well, okay, I value travel. Well, last year I went to Thailand and I had the opportunity to volunteer helping baby elephants. On my bucket list of new places to go would be Japan and Australia. So right there, we've already painted a bunch of pictures, an experience, we've shared kind of where you'd like to go, and in that, there's some very specific details. We've mentioned animals, we've mentioned service work, We've mentioned uh, places that you want to travel. And the cool part about being able to paint these kind of pictures is that it gives the person who's looking for you an easy in. It's like, wow, I've always wanted to go to Thailand. And the reason why this is so important, and this is going to be really important to jot down in your notes, the reason why this is so important is part of what you're creating with your online profile is an invitation for your person, an invitation in a way, so the second part is in a way that helps them know that they can be successful with you, that they can be someone who does fit into your life, that they know for sure, yes, I've been to Thailand too. Like there's a clear connection. The difference between this kind of connection and is if you, if you write something like, I love to travel, there's a lot of people who love to travel. But like I said, do they travel, you know, 20 minutes from their house or and just go check out the, you know, 
national park that's been in their neighborhood their whole life? Or is it something that's more international? Or is it something that's more service oriented? Or is it something that's more sort of five star experience? you got to get to the specifics so that people know where they line up. When you say general things like, oh, I like to be healthy. Healthy to you could be you get up and make a green smoothie with arugula and spirulina and nuts and almond milk or something like that. And healthy to another person could be, wow, I put lettuce on my cheeseburger and there's no judgment it's just differences so when you can start painting these pictures you're going to be able to gift the person reading it an open invitation to say yes i am that yes oh me too yes i've always wanted to do that or yes i i did blah 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 like there becomes like a real clear yes for people and a clear point of conversation. So this is part of what you want to be able to do. So rather than speaking to general terms, you want to use specifics, you want to align with your values, you want to share stories, you want to have your stories also, you know, be um, specific in a way that people can see themselves in it or not. And that's the good news. If someone's like, I would never go to a foreign country for six weeks, and th that sounds terrifying to me, they're not your person. Um, so the other piece is that you can also add some some flirting in this space where you can say, where do you want to travel? So when you're bringing your focus into actually as you're writing, including your person and actually imagining having that conversation with your person, you can even speak to your person. This is where I would like to go. Where would you like to go? And it's so it's really important that you include your person in your online profile so that that shows that you are available. It shows that you have space in your life with, for someone and it shows your values and it shows really specific ways that you live that. Here's the secret sort of extra benefit of this, if you notice that when you speak of your values that you're not actually currently living them, and this happens, people get into the hustle and bustle of life and then they start putting what really lights them up to the side and before long it's been years, maybe even longer, yet, you know, we have a sense that that's something we value, but we're not doing it. This is the time to start doing that. You know why? Because that energy of being aligned with those things that truly light you up is super magnetic. So it's not about beating yourself up. It's not about, oh, what was I thinking? I haven't, like, I've lost so much time. No, it's just about, you know what? That really did matter to me. I love that. When I do that, I feel incredible. I'm gonna look for ways to do that more and revive it, come back into it because that's a really magical energy that will support you in your love life. Good news is I wanna invite you to reach out to me to have a conversation. If you really wanna take this further and you're thinking, I don't know what to write, I don't know how to do this, or I really do know that in the next six to 12 months, I want to create a love relationship and I want a system, I want the tools, I want the strategies that actually will attract and create that phenomenal love relationship. 
then let's talk about that because I have a love attraction system that will get you there and ex expedite this process. What we know is that when you have that kind of support, go figure, when you're wanting a relationship, guess what most people say they want in relationship is that kind of support, to have that person by your side so you can share responsibilities, create life together. And when you can have support in love coaching, then you're already opening the door to a love relationship just by choosing that. So I encourage you to reach out and we can talk about what's in the way of you having your love story. Because everyone is going to have some personal wounds from the past that, or fears or insecurities that can really cloud our ability to show up online and have fun with it. Because if you're not having fun with it, then there are some fears and blocks keeping you from that. So in this session and in being able to receive through coaching a love attraction system, then you get all of that. The healing, the tools, the strategies to go from getting ready for a love relationship to then going into the dating phase, which is, can be, um, you know, there's logistical things. We talked about some of the core strategies, but picking a site, you know, knowing how to communicate with people, starting new relationships, getting past that first date, being able to manage your presence and feel secure and confident in you. There's a lot of aspects to it. I'm not going to lie. And then the final piece is, wow, I met someone I am so excited about. So in that phase, we talk about how to not sabotage it, to be able to have it and keep it and create a life together, which is awesome. So if you're interested in finding out what it would be like to have special love coaching support, to have this love attraction system, then reach out to me. We'll look at, okay, what's in the way for you? What is that true vision that you would like and the next steps that are needed and necessary so that you can actually have that? And I am someone who has studied relationship for a really long time and I have my own proven tools and practices, including regenerating images and memory, along with a lot of meditation practices and prescriptive ancient healing tools that can expedite this process really fast. And for my clients, I see that within months, they feel like a different person and you can actually receive something totally magnificent. And every day I'm getting fun letters. I just got one this week. Of people saying, wow, I am so grateful I did this work. And so I'm offering that to you. All you need to do is sign up for a happy and love strategy session. And we'll talk about what it takes to create love. I will say that, you know, to be in coaching does require an investment in time and money. So this is for those of you who are really serious about going to that next level and investing in your love life so that you're no longer winging it. I, I know that for me, it was a powerful choice and I'm so grateful I did because I now get to share my life with the most amazing person and I'm not wasting my time feeling lonelier in a miserable relationship that I'm actually able to create and grow with someone spectacular. So thanks for watching. I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to hear how it goes for you when you implement these five strategies and I look forward to meeting those of you who connect with me one-on-one. -on -one. And we'll see you really soon. I want to leave, with, leave you with one of my favorite quotes, which is, how you love your life is your love life. So what are those things that you can choose that will actually create greater for you right 
now and choose that. Thanks for being here. Bye.